Tips for editing stream clips in DaVinci Resolve. Before we even get into the editing, I do want to mention something you should be aware of if you are editing clips or VODs in Resolve. Resolve does not play well with footage with a variable frame rate. When you're streaming, you're not going to be streaming at 60 frames per second, whatever your frame rate is, every second of your live stream. You might have 60 frames on one second, 50 the next, etc. You will drop frames. Simplistically, that is what variable frame rate is. You may be able to edit this kind of footage with no issues, but other times you will run into issues. So the safest thing to do, in my opinion, before you start editing is to run your footage through something like Handbrake to re-encode it with a constant frame rate. Drag in your footage, go over to video and over here, change it to constant frame rate, and then you can just start encode. When I'm editing really short clips, I often take the risk and don't bother to re-encode the footage first, but if you're having weird issues with singular frames or even audio video desync issues, especially towards the end of longer VODs, I definitely recommend doing that before attempting other troubleshooting methods. Now I am going to start editing. Make a new timeline, but first I'm going to double check my settings. If you create a new timeline by right-clicking your footage and choosing Create New Timeline using selected clips, it should have mostly correct settings. However, there are a couple of caveats to this. First, simple one being if you want to edit it into a vertical format, but your original footage is horizontal, you will need to flip the resolution around. Second one, which is much more important, is the frame rate. And you can check these settings by unclicking Use Project Settings, and then you have access to all of these specific settings for the timeline. When you import your first clip into a new project, Resolve will ask you if you want to change the project settings to match this footage, but that is the only time you are able to edit it for the project as a whole. If you are locked into a frame rate for your project that does not match the footage you are editing, you will need to double check that your timelines are matching the frame rate of your clips. For this one, my project is correct at 30 frames per second because that is what all of my clips are. I will be switching my resolution around so I can edit my timeline vertically. Here is how I easily set up a template for editing my Twitch clips into a vertical format. First, you are going to hold down the Alt key on the keyboard and either click or box select the video layer. Holding down the Alt key allows you to select just one part of a linked clip, whereas a normal click would select the entire linked clip. For us, that would include our audio layer, which we do not want to mess with at this time. Then I'm going to duplicate my video footage by holding the Alt key on the keyboard and dragging it onto a new line. To then reposition the clips themselves, you can either do it in this transform panel with sliders and numbers, or you can come over here and toggle this transform button on. And then you can visually transform the footage by dragging it around and dragging the edges. Similarly, you can also switch this to crop instead of transform, and you can crop the footage if you would prefer to do that instead of using the buttons over here. So normally I will set my game footage up at the top, whatever parts of it I may need, since oftentimes I don't need the whole screen, so I may zoom it in a bit. And then I will grab myself and reposition myself down here, or for most people that will be your camera. And then when you have it set up this way, there's also a really convenient space right between these two layers to put some burnt in subtitles. But let's say you hadn't done that first. Let's say you have already edited your footage with some cuts, cutting out dead air, uninteresting parts. I still want to duplicate the video to do the same thing as earlier, but if you repositioned one of these segments now, it would only be repositioning the first one. However, that does not mean that you need to manually reposition all of your cuts after this because you can paste that position data onto other clips. I will go ahead and select my video footage, I'll drag it up, and just as before, I will position this how I want it. So I've positioned these first clips, but even though the rest of the clips don't have information, I can copy the position and scale data onto them. I will copy this segment that I positioned, Control C, and I will select all of the remaining clips of that layer that need to have that data applied to it. Right click them, paste attributes, then you can select what's relevant for you. I am usually pasting position and scale, but you may have other effects to copy like crop, maybe rotation data or color correction, so on. Apply. You can see all of those clips on that top layer are now positioned the same. I will do the same thing for the bottom layer. 
I do prefer and recommend repositioning your clips before you start slicing and editing. But if you forget to do it first, or maybe you edited a full landscape video and now want to re-edit it for mobile, you can fix it. If you're editing for a platform like TikTok, I would really recommend you download these templates that can show you where the overlay sits over your footage on most phones, what parts of the frame may be cropped out for many people, what area of the frame is safe to put content on. If you, like me, edit most of your content outside of the app, this is super, super helpful for knowing what it will ultimately look like on the platform. I will adjust the opacity of it down to maybe 50% while editing, and then if I want to see the content I'm editing, I can either disable the entire video layer over here, or I can just select the clip itself and hit D on the keyboard for disable, just to disable the clip instead of the whole layer. Something I consider often when editing clips is which layer I will have on top. For me, most of the time, I will have my game footage as a top layer because I do a lot of zooms and repositioning of myself and not the game. Because the game footage is staying in the same place, it is automatically visually cropping my camera footage where it overlaps and saving me some time by not having to adjust the crop of the footage and not adjusting the position of where these clips meet in the middle. Most of your editing is going to be splicing and moving clips around. So your shortcuts for that are B for the blade tool, which is this tool right here, which will splice the footage where you click. If you have snapping on, which is over here, it will snap to either your playhead or cuts on other layers, but if you need more precision, you can turn snapping off with this button. To switch back to your cursor, you can use the keyboard shortcut A or select the cursor icon. I believe in Premiere Pro that these shortcuts are C for cut and V for select. So if you're switching from Premiere, like if you used to have a student subscription but aren't a student anymore, that is going to be one of the more difficult adjustments to make at first. Lastly, I'm going to add some burnt in subtitles to my footage with the text feature in Resolve. Whenever possible, I do advocate for creating actual subtitle files like on YouTube where you can turn them off and on as they can be more accessible. But if you're going to be posting your videos places like TikTok or Facebook or Reddit, which don't have good subtitle infrastructure, combined with how videos are often downloaded and shared around in other ways, I definitely recommend burning in subtitles to increase the accessibility of your content. I generally do both. I do burn in subtitles for my edited clips for YouTube, but then I also create actual SRT files to upload as subtitles. I have added all my captions. I haven't worried about positioning or font while I do that part because at the end I can select all of these text clips to edit the position, color, font, and size all at once. And there are external programs that you could use to add your subtitles, but I think it's easy to go ahead and do them in Resolve, especially since I'm already here editing the video and I won't have to re-export the video. I'm doing it all in one step. Before export, I again recommend checking any templates you have to make sure important parts of your content aren't going to be cut off by UI. Now we will go over to the Deliver tab for Export, the last tab at the bottom. Then you need to double check all of your settings. Personally, I would generally recommend exporting as an MP4, even though it often defaults to a QuickTime MOV, but not everyone can read those files correctly, and an MP4 is a much more widely accepted container format. Otherwise, these other settings like frame rate and resolution should match your timeline, but it's always good to double check. Under quality, when I'm ready to export my final copy, I will be exporting at best quality. But if I were exporting a rough cut for someone, I often lower the quality for both faster exporting as well as a lower file size if you're sending something over platforms like Discord that may only have an eight megabyte limit for free users to upload. If you set in and out points on your timeline with I and O on the keyboard, make sure that you select in out range as what will be rendered because otherwise it will export the entire timeline even if you had some clips that you had added that you have at the end that you maybe didn't use. If everything looks good, you can hit add to render queue. And then when you are ready to render, you can hit render in the bottom right. Render cues can be really excellent if you want to edit several clips at a time and then wait until you're done for the night to take the time to render them all at once while you are away from the computer. And that's it for a basic introduction. Please let me know if there's anything you need help with or want to know more about, and I can definitely do some more tutorials in the future.